early 2011, a team from the Mona School of Business participated in a business plan competition in Atlanta, Georgia, and they did Jamaica and themselves proud. Today I'm going to be interviewing members of that team. Tell us about the type of work that is done here that really has enabled the phenomenal success of this team from our tiny island. Mona School of Business is a wonderful institution. Um, they are not only concerned with their academics, but they want us to be entrepreneurs. They want us to not only, they're not only preparing us to go and work for others, but they want us to be employers of others. And so we have several courses here that enable us, equip us, change the thinking as it may. Um, we're no longer just looking to get a job or get a promotion. We're looking to own our own businesses. One of those um, courses through which this particular business plan um, came was the New Venture and Entrepreneurship course. All of these courses are taught by persons who, are, who have their own businesses and so they know the practical side of running a business. They can tell you from experience what they have gone through. They can tell you the challenges they have had, the successes they have had, and so you are encouraged, you become a little bit more enthused about owning your business. And coming out of that, we did a business plan. The business plan was um, entered into a competition because, again, they try to not only leave it at the academic in the classroom, but they want you to hone the skills, they want you to improve upon your plan to ensure that it's a viable venture and that you can actually implement. And so that's what happened. We had a plan, a very good plan. They, they, they assisted us in improving the plan. We entered a competition and now we're looking to implement. Looking to implement, meaning uh, you're trying to develop a product and sell it to the public? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are looking to start a farm producing real Jamaican ginger, which is the finest ginger in the world, and then we're going to do some value-added products as well. Rowan, the euphoria associated with the success of the steam, I dare say phenomenal success, you're translating it into action. Yes, we are. One of the things I'd like to you know, I always ask people who are going into business, have you studied the law of the land, the realities out there, the laws which govern business, uh, you know, to whether you're going as a sole trader or a limited liability company. What is the plan of action? Well, the, we have studied the, um, the different options available. We, we will be starting as a limited liability company because we feel that this offers is the best opportunity for our company to, to grow, to be viable, to be able to seek additional funding, um, acquire loans where necessary. Um, so we believe this is the best option right now uh, for our company. When may the public see some products from this team? And what, what's the name of the company? The name of the company is the Jamaica Ginger Factory and we will be we're hoping to have products on the market by next year and around november or december um this this growing cycle is over nine months and um, as soon as we have set up our infrastructure we'll be going into planting to have a reap next year in december now Taja, very important competition you your team has won Tell us about the dynamics of that competition and in any team, responsibilities fall with particular persons, you know, um, who did what? Okay, well, the dynamics of our team is actually very good. Christine is our team leader, so she generally has information about ginger, how it's produced. So she's the resident ginger expert. She's a country girl. Yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> so she knows all about what it is that we're going to produce. Rohan was in charge of our financials, as in charge of marketing and PR. And Daniil Barnett, who is not here, was actually in charge of operations. 
because she's already in agriculture, so she has some knowledge of what it takes to actually build a company like ours. And um, we worked very, very well together. I must say that um, everybody pulls their own weight. And it's not often you find a team of four persons that gel as well as we did and still do. And the thing about it is that we have a mindset where we visualize what it is we expect. So when you enter a competition, you expect to win. And that's exactly how we visualized winning everything, doing our best. And then naturally, um, it dictates how much work you put in once you visualize exactly what you want to get. You know, you, you made an interesting point about the various strengths or the various um, tasks associated with each team member, and that's important in business. It does make sense you have three persons who are marketers. Right. You need an accountant, right. and you need somebody to pull everything together, and of course you need somebody to market it. Exactly, and you need somebody to actually make decisions. And so once you can identify somebody who has overall responsibility, it's also a good thing. Your team, Christine, is diverse and each person has a responsibility. I want to go back to the actual competition. How did you utilize, how did the team utilize the, its diverse makeup to win that competition? Tell us about the team dynamics when you were in Atlanta? Okay. In Atlanta, we knew that to win, we had to ensure that not only the presentation was on point, but we were able to answer the questions. 20, per, 20 minutes of the presentation was just question and answers. Mm -hmm. And so, no matter how well you are able to present, you have to be able to answer difficult questions. And I think what sets us apart or what set the team apart in Atlanta in a large way is how we're able to answer our questions. And so we went through a rigorous question and answer exercise where financial questions were handled primarily by Rohan, marketing questions by Taja. And so we knew we run through a lot of questions. We knew if the question comes that you're not familiar with, Christine will take it, that kind of thing. And so we knew that if we had that down, if we knew what our roles were, what our responsibilities were, and we were able to take difficult questions and prove that our company was viable, then we would be able to set ourselves apart. And I think that is how we were able to do that. Give us an example of two of the questions. One question they ask us is what keeps us up at night as it relates to the business. They ask us, you know, tell us what, you know, what is your vote? A business such as this and as I can remember our response was hurricanes because you're in a hurricane belt so naturally we have to consider factors such as hurricane however we had strategies to mitigate against hurricanes for example for greenhouses can withstand hurricane force winds of up to um, for 100 miles per hour we the plants are pretty low and so we do not have to worry about the wind damage and that kind of thing. So we had answers, we had very well researched answers for them. So we anticipated what questions they were going to ask and so we had well researched answers. Another question they asked us was about the marketing, you know, where are you going to go and why? And when we explained where we're going to go, you know, they had specific questions related to this particular market because they would have done their research as well to see what is happening in these markets. And of course, we did our research and were able to, co to counter these questions. And so that is what we set us apart. We also caught up with Patricia Lothian, one of the directors of the Vincent Hosang Entrepreneurship Program at the Mona School of Business. The success of the team that went to Atlanta in that business plan competition. Now the competition itself is a mouthful, so I'll just call it uh, the business plan competition. <laughs> Congratulations to the team. But first of all, how was that team select, selected? T tell us about the, the work that uh, goes on. Because very often in life, people see the success, you know, they don't know the backbreaking work that goes on behind the scene. All right, we have a local competition that precedes the overseas competition and it's a UWI Venture Challenge competition 
which is an arm of the Vincent Hosang entrepreneurship program that we have here at the Mona School of Business. Our local competition actually has a mentorship um, portion to it and it's a partnership with the with selected persons from the private sector as well as our own faculty here who act as mentors and advisors to prepare them for the local competition. The local competition is a lot like the Atlanta competition um, in that there are three sections and they have to prepare a business plan and then the other, the, 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 third, the second section is actually based on the viability of the project and the third portion is a presentation in which they have to you know, present their project in front of a group of judges as well as students and faculty, anybody else in the audience and any persons who might be interested in be to become a venture capitalist for the project. Okay.